Hello, hello. Years ago, I questioned their, you know, their status with the IRS. It was right after the National Bank, they did not have just donated to them, and they, you know. Is that clock right or my clock? That's right. We're ready? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. It's uh, 7.30, and we're about to begin the Marshall Borough Council meeting of April 16th, 2018. If you'll all please rise for a moment of silence and our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Madam President, there's one announcement. If you want to just remind everybody, starting next month, our meetings will start at 7 p.m. Okay. All right. Uh, just to remind everyone, uh, this is the last meeting that we're doing at 7.30, so the meetings will begin next month at 7 o'clock. So we'll remind everyone about that. Is it posted on the TV? And yep. Okay. All right. Just a little reminder. Okay. Uh, could we have a roll call, please? Not here. Councilman Bowers? Here. Councilman Here. Councilman Here. Councilman Here. Councilman He's by telephone. Yeah, you're here, right, Ted? Say hi. Yeah. 
My phone has been acting up since it got wet in the rain today. So. Okay, Ted's here. <laughs> here. 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 Present. Okay. Uh, first, we'll do a public comment. If anyone has signed up, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Bill Setzer, 806 Crown Street. I'm on the Marsville EAC. And uh, we certainly have a sparse con uh, gathering here tonight. I, I chalk it up to the weather's so good, people just can't believe it. And <laughs> they want to like look at their backyard or Could something. <laughs> The main reason I came tonight was um, we had a Greystone. We did, this was the 18th year in a row. We've had an annual spring cleanup at the Greystone Woods. It's all volunteer. Uh, had a sparse turnout there compared to some of our bigger ones. Sometimes we get 20, 25 people. We got 10 people, including myself. And uh, believe it or not, even 10 people can make a big difference uh, on something important and something uh, they enjoy. Uh, we were blessed with great weather, and uh, I'm sure everybody's really excited about that. Now, if it would just stay this way. And um, oddly enough, there was almost no trash. And years ago, we used to haul out 20, 30 bags of trash. So all these cleanups and the general look at the place year after year looking pretty decent, I guess, has an influence on people not to throw their garbage there. So we're all very pleased by that. Um, one thing, though, that occurred, which was very disturbing, people have been telling me about it, and I'd been seeing it for a couple months since March, when we had a big uh, ice storm. Apparently, lots of limbs came down at everybody's house, but particularly a lot of uh, evergreens broke and broke off big limbs and broke in half, and somebody had hauled them into the edge of the woods, and there was a lot of them, and it looked bad, and they clearly didn't come out of the woods because there aren't any evergreens and graystones. It's all deciduous trees. So the 10 of us decided, um, we, we certainly kept our fingers crossed that the borough would help us, and I want to thank the borough council and Scott Mitchell and John Latch for hauling the debris away today. We pulled it onto the easement. It was a lot of work, but it was well worth it, and it looks 100 times better now. And I'm, I'm so pleased that you took action on it quickly, got rid of it. It looked, <laughs> it looked unusual to see all this brush on the sidewalk. So um, with that in mind, uh, I, I just like to read the names of the people. There's only 10 of them. They may as well get a little public acclaim. And then uh, uh, Wanda Cartel was there. Ted Parker was there. Tom Wisnowski was there. Karen Kane was there. Justin Bowers was there. Janet Ravella was there. Uh, a local resident, Diana Vitarelli, was there. Uh, Debbie Colgan from the EAC was there. And uh, a, a lady from the, the first ward, Cello Del Plazio, was there at the end. And that was actually very pleasing. Everybody, we were almost done. And uh, she came, and uh, she wanted to do something. So I stayed, and we did some <laughs> further cleanup. So, we, you know, you never give up. And so um, that's my main reason for coming here was that. We um, had some discussion at the time. Justin was there and, and, and various people. And um, we hope that um, before, we, we think the idea of maybe a couple of like low impact signs, just saying no dumping, no littering is a, is a great idea. But really low impact. Um, before you order them, I wanted to send uh, Scott and, and uh, John, who says he's already worked on the sign, just some, a couple little ideas we, the ESC had worked on for the riverfront preserve. Um, we don't want to like shout no dumping, like this is a place people have to like, you know, we want it to still be a welcoming place too. And uh, so that's, uh, and maybe, maybe a little letter to send out to the residents just at reminding them that <laughs> this isn't a dump. And we thank you for your help on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. for all your work down there. Appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, just since, I guess, if anybody's going to enjoy this meeting or benefit from it, I guess they're going to have to watch it on TV. I really congratulate all of you or those of you who prevailed and, and 
putting more on, of our meetings back on TV, not just this, but other meetings. I think it's really valuable to the public to be able to weigh in on it. Not everybody can make meetings at 7.30 p.m. on a particular day. So the more we can televise it, the better. I think it's, it's a great idea. And uh, those people should also remember, even though they didn't come out tonight, all of you came out. And uh, you guys do a lot of public service. And it's not for yourselves. It's really for the community. So. We applaud you for that. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Bill, Bill, very much. Thank you. Um, the Riverfront Preserve cleanup, when is that? Yeah. The, oh, thank you. Yeah. See, there's so much for me to say, and I forget half of it. The Riverfront Preserve cleanup is not this coming weekend. It's the following Saturday. It'll be from 10 till noon. And um, so if any of you can come to that, mm -hmm. it, you'll get it. I'll tell you something. There's something about doing stuff for free that most of us aren't accustomed to. And the socializing is wonderful, and it's a great location. So if you can come to it, I think you'll really uh, be surprised how much you might enjoy it. And it does benefit everybody, the whole community. And uh, then also, this coming week, this coming Saturday at the open area below the dog park on that same parcel, there's a group of Native Americans who are going to be doing like a ceremony, their own personal ceremony, but they welcome people to watch and take pictures. They have fabulous outfits, and it's very interesting. I think it would be particularly a good thing for kids to see just because it's so unusual. And they're very nice people. And they're also, they donated last year, and they're donating again this year, uh, a river birch about six to eight feet tall, which I'm going to help them plant. And uh, that'll just go towards making the whole uh, that whole parcel look a little nicer. So uh, people should consider going to that. And uh, the Borough website also has other events. We have a nature walk at the Riverfront Preserve in early May on a Sunday uh, at morning or afternoon, which people, it's really fabulous. Free. Thanks, Bill. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. OK. Uh, next, state your name and address for the record, please. Oh, the list is on the table. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Holly. Thank you, Holly. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry, it was Jane Berger. <laughs> You're next on the list. No, Doesn't matter? Okay. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I see that we, um, on the bill list, we had the financial audit. Um, just wondering when we would be um, sharing the results of that financial audit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a partial payment. The audit is not complete. Oh, okay. When it's complete, a report will be presented to council. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And the public. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, also, um, I did ask last week, and I'm expecting an answer this week, about the motto contest for the restaurant week. Um, I was wondering why it was exclusive only to Holy Trinity and not to the Morrisville School District students. Quinn, did you ask any of the schools to, to do it all? Yes, the Marshall School District was asked, and they weren't able to participate this year. Hopefully, they will next year. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Berger, state your name and record, your address for the record, please. Jane Berger, 90 West Mabel Avenue, Morrisville. A uh, couple things this evening. Um, I know some of you have gotten the information, and I do have a flyer again. Uh, next Monday, April 23rd, the uh, Morrisville Business Association will having its spring dinner meeting. Guest speaker will be Ted Millard, who's of good friends. We thought it was timely in, in terms of all the opioid issues that are out there to see what a successful program is doing and how that impacts or benefits the, uh, the community in how uh, we deal with that and if there's any impacts for business, businesses. So I'll again give the flyers. Uh, everyone uh, on council, mayor, administrative folks are invited to attend. Also for our listening audience, uh, it is open to the public. You can go to the MBA website and make your reservation. We still have some seats available. So even though the flyer had a response of the, the 12th, um, we're still able to do that. And we hope to see many people to come out next Monday. OK, that hat is off. Uh, wearing my um, hat as chair of the MMA Authority, I just want to share with you, since you have two non-budgeted cost items on the agenda tonight, item um, 9, I think it's 9E and 9F, the service agreements for the HVAC and 
the video that uh, the MMA will be cost sharing in those uh, two items for you um, since we do share in that and we are, some of you know, looking forward to videoing our MMA meetings and having a way for them to be secured on our separate website so we're not forever taking up additional uh, borough space. In that. Okay. Um, question for the policy committee. I know we've had some, um, I was going to think the right word for this, um, issues lately regarding recovery, recovery houses and where they're zoned and whatever. And I'm just hoping that the policy committee will look at our um, zoning regards to that and any updates that's needed in definitions or clarifying um, where within the borough um, is appropriate place to have those facilities to help those individuals in need, um, given all that's been said before. Uh, and finally, uh, I want to speak to the uh, to agenda items for this uh, AFSCME uh, amendment. I'm wondering if 9A, do you first need a motion to bring this item off the table? Because uh, it just wasn't there, so that's just a clarification. And also uh, 9I, um, which is a new motion related to that, but it gives the hourly wage, which I believe to be more appropriate rather than $2 or whatever. I do want to share with you that uh, wearing my MMA hat, I did have a conversation uh, with the former manager, Bates, at some point in 20. 15, I'm not sure the exact date, regarding the crew chief position, because I wasn't aware that there was any employee in that title. Um, but we'd, we'd seen on you know, some, some light items, some, some cost, and you know you got 600,000, know, you figure your staffing out. And he told me at that time there was no one in the crew chief position. And in fact, the contract that was uh, voted in 2014 to begin in 2015, I believe, abolished that as a union title. And I actually was given a copy of the contract from Mr. Bates at that point in time. I'm hearing a mumbling, I'm sure somebody will address that, and you've probably already had discussions on it. But it was taken out of a contract, it was put back in, and certainly that's what you're gonna deal with tonight. There really wasn't any meeting of the Borough Council to vote that, so I'm glad you're doing that this evening to legitimize the use of that position again and setting a cost right for it. And um, I really did see that page that listed all the titles that were covered by the union. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll close public comment at this time. Okay, we're gonna move on to the uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, we have the minutes for a special council meeting of January 2nd, 2018. 6B would be the regular council meeting of February 20th, 2018. You all received all of these, um, so I'd like a, a motion for this. So moved. Okay, second? Second. Second, okay, so that was moved by Mr. Yeager and second by Ms. Larson. Any questions or comments on any of these? Is this both of them? Yeah, yes it is. Okay, because I'll be abstaining from the first one. Or not abstaining, but voting no. Do you, would you rather do them separate then? Them separate, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll do them separate then, okay. All right, so we'll be doing 6A first. January 2nd, 2018 meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Same two people. Any questions or comments on those? No? Okay. Well, then we'll do a roll call on that, please. S6A. I'm sorry. They're going to separate it. Yeah. Sure. No. No. Yes. Yes. Councilman Parker? Yes. Councilman May? Yes. 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 Motion passes 6 2. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you abstain? He wasn't here. He wasn't here. Well, he already saw the minutes. Okay. okay. I'm good with that. Okay. I need to state why I'm sitting. Oh, okay. We'll hand that out, Jane. Thank you. No. Yeah. Okay. 6B is the February 20th uh, minutes, 2018. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. That was moved by Eileen Dreisbach, second by Justin Bowers. Any questions or comments on this motion? Okay. We'll do a roll call then on it. Yes. Yes. 
Chronicle? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Parker? Yes. Councilman Nay? Yes. 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 Motion passes 8-0. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, finance. Um, 7A is the treasury report. Is there anything you want to bring on? We're okay. Anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Motion to approve it. So moved. Second. And second? Okay. Eileen, oh, Eileen seconds, okay. Moved by Mike Yeager, second by Eileen Dreisbach. Um, all in favor say aye. I'm sorry, oh, is this sorry. for 7B? I apologize. I, no. 7A. 8A? 7A. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jesus. 7A, 7A, 7A finance report. We don't have to approve. I have a motion for that. I don't think we need a motion. We don't need a motion for that. That's why I have a motion for 7A. Nope. Okay, we're just. Motion to approve the bill with right. 7B. Okay. 7B. Okay. Okay. Oh. That's what I was making sure. It's just making sure. Okay, so motion to pay the bills. That's what I thought we were doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's 7B. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm cold. Yes. Don't confuse me. The vote with the report? Yeah, it, I thought it was the bill list. That's why I Yeah, why I it should have just it. done the bill list. We weren't doing no, that. Uh, to we're approve doing the it. bills. Yeah. Okay. It's communication. So it should be 7B for the bill, the bill list. Okay, and then you do 7A. No, there's no reason to do 7A. There's no report. There's no report. There's no report. There's no There's no report. There's no report. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a financial statement. Okay, so we don't need that approved, right? Okay. Okay. All right, so that it was 7B, motion to approve the bill list and pay the bills. It was moved by Mike Vega and seconded again. by Eileen so Dreisbach. Okay. Now, any questions or comments on that motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, next we'll go on to the reports. Um, the mayor's not here this evening, um, so uh, I, he can send in a, a report, I'm sure, to the council. Our junior council person is not here tonight, so there's no report from her. We'll move on to the action items. Um, let me explain this one first, 9A, so that everyone understands it. This motion was tabled at the uh, last meeting, so it has to be voted to bring it off of the table first, and then the motion gets read, and then it's voted up or down, yes or no. So first, I would like to uh, entertain a motion to bring this motion, 9A, off the table. So moved. Second. Second, okay. Any questions or comments on this motion? Everyone understand? Okay. Do I have a roll call on it? This is the motion to bring it off the table. To bring it off the table, yes. Yes or no? Bring it off the table. To Councilman Dowers? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Larson? Yes. Councilman Parker? Yeah. Okay. Councilman Nay? Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Motion passes 8-0 to bring it off of the table. Now we'll read the motion 9A. Motion to approve addendum to the ASME agreement, increasing the hourly pay rate for the Public Works Department crew leader position by $2 per hour. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved. Okay, moved by. Second. And second by Mike Yeager. Um, any questions or comments? Everyone understands this. You have to either vote it yes as the stands or no that you don't want to approve this particular motion now that it's on the off the table. So can I have a roll call, please? No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. yes. No. 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 Okay, so motion passes for. I'm sorry, it failed. It's 9A. It's 5 5 3? Okay. So it'll be 3 5. 3 5. Okay, all right. Um, 
Yeah, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go a little bit out of order, and I'm going to bring up the motion 9I. You'll see at the end. And this is the new motion that's being put up. And this basically is to, for council to put the position in, because as Ms. Berger had stated, and we looked at the information, uh, this particular way this was done by uh, former manager, Mr. Bates, it was not ever approved by the council. So the, uh, after speaking with the attorney, it really didn't exist. So it has to legally be put in by the council properly. So this is what this vote is for tonight. So we're gonna move that forward now. So 9I is a motion to approve Addendum to the ASME agreement memorializing the position of crew leader in the Public Works Department at an hourly rate of $27.64. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Okay, and second? Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Ney and second by Mr. Bowers. Any questions or comments on this? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Okay, thank you. All right. We'll move back to 9B. Is a motion to approve the employment agreement for the borough manager? Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Yeager, second by Mr. Bowers. Um, any questions or comments on this? Okay, all in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. One opposed, Ms. Chronicle. Did you hear that, Mr. Parker? Was yes. Yes. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, I didn't hear it. Thank you. So that's seven to one. Passes. Thank you. Um, motion 9C. Motion to approve ordinance establishing four all-way stop signs at the intersection of Green Street and Washington Street. Can so I have a moved. Motion? Second. Moved by Ms. Dreisbach. Second by um, Ms. Chronicle. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments on this motion? Do we have an idea as to when this will the stop signs will be placed? No. We do not, but Public Works has ordered the signage. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the other thing I'm going to say it's it's um, I'm glad it's finally happening. It's an area that definitely needs it to to be done. So um, I'm glad it's on the uh, agenda for this. So we hope you pass it. Yeah, yeah. So we hope you all, we hope you all pass at this point. <laughs> well, since, the so, yeah, since the signs are here. <laughs> <laughs> complete transparency. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll have residents here next week. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. aye. Thank you. Motion passes eight zero. Okay. Motion nine D. A motion to designate an official voting delegate and an altered delegate for the 107th General Assembly of Boroughs, June 10th to 13th, 2018. The designated voting delegate is appointed for the purpose of electing the officers of the association and voting on proposed resolutions and policies. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved. So, Second. Okay, so uh, Danielle, oh, Mike, Mike, moved and, and drives back. Second. Okay. Um, I'd like to nominate Debbie Smith as the um, delegate. Second. Okay, we'll do that one first. Thank you. Any other nominations for anyone else? Doesn't. Yes. Do we do with the alternate at the same time? Uh, no. Separately. Yeah, separately. probably do them. Se yeah, se separately. Right. Yeah, clean it that way. Uh, oh, can you hear Ted? Okay. We'll, I guess, take a vote on, on me. Okay. Um, for Debbie Smith for the uh, voting delegate. Yeah, have I heard of her? <laughs> I think I might know her. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you, everyone. That passes 8 0. Okay, now we'll put up the for the um, alternate delegate Daniel Larison. Daniel Larison. Okay. I'll second. Second that. Okay. Okay, well, any other names? No? Okay. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes 8-0. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, 9E, approval of the one-year maintenance agreement to be renewed annually with LPS Associates, LLC, for audiovisual equipment not to exceed $3,489, a third of which will be paid by the Marsville Municipal Authority. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, so moved. 
<laughs> moved by Danielle Larsons and second by Eileen Dreisbach. Any questions or comments on this? Um, I would just like to make a comment, and um, even though this is an unbudget item, I, I do want to thank our uh, borough manager for getting on top of these things. Uh, long term, um, we, we really need to be more focused on making sure that the maintenance for these items are there, and I appreciate you taking the time to do that. I, I absolutely agree with that. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, since this is a, uh, a money item, we'll do a roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Motion passes eight zero. Okay. Okay. Motion nine F. Approval of three-year maintenance agreement with Johnson Controls, Inc. for ongoing maintenance of the HVAC system as outlined in their proposal dated 10-23-2017, half of which will be paid by the Marshville Municipal Authority. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Ms. Larson. And a second? Second. Second. Second by Mike Yeager. Any questions or comments on this motion? Again, I'd like to make a comment. Um, just for anybody who didn't catch the um, our, our meeting last week, um, I, I, I want to make sure people understand that the reason why um, Johnson Controls is being chosen is because of the contract, the, uh, the uh, energy contract we have with them. No one else is allowed to touch these items or avoids that contract. And although it may not be um, a, a hugely... Um, desired service, um, it's something that we absolutely need because, again, we have to have maintenance on these items. Great. Scott, Aye. what's the uh, amount on this? Don't bring that with me. That's a good question, Mr. Barrows. Pull that up. It was on. Yeah, to bring the paper with me. <clears throat> I believe I have it in my packet. I have it. You have it? It's $3,625 for year one, and it's a three-year contract. The price schedule is attached. Virginia got to it before I did. <laughs> uh, year two is $3,735, and year three is $3,855. Thank you, Speedy. Thank, thank you, Virginia. Okay, I have a comment. Thanks. Sure. Um, I was here when Johnson Controls came into town and they were awarded this contract for the lighting and whatnot and the heating and um, air conditioning. And I cannot in all honesty vote for anything for Johnson Controls. So I will be voting no. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just make my own comment on it. Um, now my favorite subject, Johnson Controls. Everyone knows that. I go, oh. <laughs> um, it is what it is. Um, you have these things and you have to honor them and you have to take care of it. And I also will say that um, the manager has been catching up on all these things that need to make sure they have the contracts on them to make sure they get the maintenance that they need. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough pill to swallow, but it's something has to be done. They are the ones that designed that unit. So to make sure that it's taken care of properly and that services is, is there for us, we, we have to do this. So... Um, at this point, we will do a uh, roll call, please. She did a second on it, yeah. Didn't. Yeah, yes. Danielle moved it, and Mike Yeager seconded. Captain Dallas? Yes. Captain no. Captain yes. Captain yes. Captain Parker? Mr. Parker, can you hear? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Nay? Yes. Councilman Yes. And Councilman Yes. Motion passes 7 1. Uh, the next one is 9 G. Approval of resolution authorizing the submission of a community recreation and conservation planning grant, C2P2, application for Williamson Park. So I, moved. I have a motion. Second. Uh, 
Okay, moved by Eileen Dreisbach, second by Daniel Larson. Any questions or comments on this motion? I have a question. Sure. So specifically, um, we're, we're looking to get a grant for uh, just the planning of Williamson Park? Yes, this is a grant to pay for a master plan. Okay. Williamson Park. And uh, I'll ask this directly to our borough manager because he's closest to it than any of us. Um, if we get this grant, do we have money to do anything with it? Eventually. <laughs> not this year, you're not. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to table this <laughs> to, for, for further discussion to see if it's something that we can take two, three, four steps forward on this thing and make sure that we're applying for something that we could actually utilize. Um, yeah. My my only hesitation in doing that mm -hmm. is some of the other grants we apply for like to see a plan for a park before they agree to grant funding for it. Okay. And so to have nothing, um, while I understand your reservation, um, could shoot us in the foot down the road later. Okay. And we paid the engineer. I didn't get a second on my motion anyway. Mm. Okay. Is there a second from anyone to? I tried. <laughs> okay. So for lack of second, then it, it fails. Okay. Is there a motion to ap approve this motion? So moved. So moved. Okay. So we have a second and a one. We already had them. And who? Okay. So we moved it. We need another second. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, then we'll take. Come on, Jeff. Take a What's on first? Who's on second? <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Motion passes. Eight zero. Uh, next motion is 9H, motion to approve Marshville Borough co-sponsoring Restaurant Week the week of May 27th to June 2nd, 2018 with the Marshville Business Association. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, all right, Corinne. Well, all right, Corinne. <laughs> Corinne, we'll give you the motion. Sure. And second by Mr. Ney. Any questions or comments on this motion? Yes, if I could just really quickly run down... Um, What's going to be going on for Restaurant Week? Again, it is May uh, 27th to June 2nd. The restaurants that have signed up, again, seven restaurants in seven days, so take advantage of that. We have Cafe Antonio's, Concerto Fusion, excuse me, Concerto Fusion, Salute Restaurante, Anthony's Four Pizza, Shri Fusion, La Villa, and Michael's Restaurant. Um, again, 5% of all of the proceeds will go, just as last year, to the Marsville Ambulance Squad. And I want to thank, again, uh, Mid-Atlantic Printing right in here in town on um, Pennsylvania Avenue for their very generous donation of posters and table toppers. I hope to have those in the next couple of weeks. And if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes 8-0. Okay, we'll skip 9i. We did it. The last one is 9j, motion to appoint Gary Zampano to the position of full-time police officer subject to passing uniform physical and psychological examinations. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. moved. Okay, so we'll, Mr. Ney moved. Ms. Larson, would you second. like a second? Okay. <laughs> Any questions or comments on this motion? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes, 8-0. Okay, there's no unfinished business. Um, I don't believe there's any new business. So we'll move right on to borough officials. Anyone uh, have anything they'd like to say during this time? Madam President, may sure. I just make an introduction? Sure. With us this evening is Steve Ware, who's our zoning officer uh, through Keystone Municipal Services. He won't be attending every one of your meetings, but he will periodically. But I wanted you to at least put a, a face with the name. And if we have any questions about the Keystone Report, he's the one who writes it every month. So, mm -hmm. oh, 
Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I'll yield to the back to the president. Then. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I would yeah. like to make a comment about Keystone, if I may. Okay. Um, so we made the changes. Um, I believe in February we decided to make the changes to the permitting uh, fees. Yes. And I just wanted to give the public a heads up. Anyone who's watching, um, in January the permitting fees covered about fifty-seven percent of code enforcement, fire marshal, UNOs, and zoning. Um, in February, um, they, uh, those fees covered about 48% of all of those jobs, code enforcement, fire marshal, UNOs, and zoning officer. In March, with the change in the, in the fees, um, it covered 83% of the cost of those positions. And actually, for the month of March, cost the borough $2,684.50 for all of, those, um, all of those items to be covered. And I, I really appreciate their hard work. Anyone else? Just, uh, oh, okay. Could I yeah, sure. add comment there? Uh, I think you're going to notice that those figures are going to ebb and flow over time. Um, it's not the intent of a UCC opt-in program for it to be a profitable venture for the municipality. The idea is we should, our, you know, our, our, the fees we charge should uh, offset our costs and hopefully we break even. Seldom is that the case, but I think with our new fee schedule and the way we're running the program now that uh, we'll be seeing some improvement in that area. We're off to a great start. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say I also spoke to our zoning officer right before the meeting started and uh, we really have been getting some good feedback from the code company and the zoning meetings that have taken place. So I really appreciate all the, the work that they've been doing. People are noticing. And uh, little by little, it's, it'll, it'll get better and we'll get more and more on track. So uh, I'd like to thank them. That's and, not always going to be the case. No, 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 I know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. But uh, positive is always good anywhere you can take it. Um, is there any other uh, things anyone would like to say? I have tonight? a question. Sure. I noticed that you have, um, for the properties that were destroyed on Park Avenue, 39 and 41, I was just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on the variance that they want to do from to use an A4 in the R2 district. What exactly is an A4? That's essentially explaining why the part that was destroyed by fire was explained well. It was totally destroyed. There was no foundation for the whole here. Can you speak up? It's kind of noisy here. Yeah. Sorry. Why don't you yeah, just grab the portable? Okay, that better? Oh, uh, much. Okay, anyhow, um, the fire destroyed the twin unit. It left no foundation. The old foundation was basically dirt and rock and wood. There was nothing left to even indicate the exact location of the footprint. So the engineers did the best they could to reconstruct what had been there, and that does require uh, having a different use, the A4 use, in the R2 zoning district. And there will be some dimensional uh, variances as well for uh, side yards and so forth. And uh, this, this will be all new construction. It will be a similar footprint to the old one. I think uh, what we've seen so far will be very nice. So it's a residential use currently, mm-hmm. and it's being asked to be just a different type of a different residential type, use. Because the R2 does not allow an attached dwelling, uh, the A4 category in the R2. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. So that's the variances on that one. Okay. And the packets will be going out uh, very shortly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Why you're in the hot spot up there. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there any other updates on the other two properties that are there? Uh, yeah. The, uh, the Stockham update... No, I'm sorry, I, I, the other two properties oh, the other, uh, adjacent no, to we, those two. We were contacted related. by the health department. They had a complaint about the one property that has a lot of debris. And um, they have not really cooperated. We're pursuing it on our end. The only thing we can look at is property maintenance violations with the site. Uh, the county health department is looking at it from their perspective. So we'll, we'll zero in on them. But he has not to participate at all with the other, the other two doing these units. You were going to mention about the Stockham property? Yeah, if you want an update on that. Sure. It's, it's constantly changing. 
Um, <laughs> on my little list here, it said that Todd is no longer the owner or the general contractor. Well, it turns out Todd still owns a portion of it. They have another gentleman that owns the rest of it. And we have a meeting this Friday with all of them, their team. They're bringing in a new GC. Uh, we'll have our consultants there and so forth. Number one, go th all the existing permits will go through and make sure they understand what they're supposed to be doing and when they're supposed to be doing it. Uh, we sent them a letter with property maintenance violations that had violations in 18 different categories of wow. varying degree. It was a full page. We'll be addressing those and get them to generate some kind of an action plan for knocking them off the list. Some are easy to do, some are, are more, uh, more difficult. So we'll be having that meeting and hopefully we'll all get on track with a new team, a new team of developer, new general contractor, and get them back on a, a reasonable timeline. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. That's really good news. Thank you. It was you. difficult tracking them down. We finally um, sure. managed, anyway. <laughs> yeah, they haven't been easy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your work on that. Thank you. Very much. Anyone else? The discussion of the bus. Oh. <laughs> the vanishing bus. Yeah, yeah. If you notice today, the bus was gone. Uh, the chief found a, a thing in the uh, a parking meter ordinance that allowed you to basically ticket or end or tow vehicles that are parked for an extended period of time at an expired meter. So apparently he left them a note the other day and uh, he got a response. So we'll have to make sure that it doesn't come back again. The extension cord that was running out there was a property maintenance violation. That's been addressed. The reason for that cord going out there was to serve, service that bus, I believe, because it's diesel. And the engine gets cold in the winter and you have to preheat it. And so without the bus there, there will be no extension cord and it would not be allowed anyway. Okay. So that's essentially the update on that. We're going to stay on top of it, make sure that it doesn't come back, make sure it hasn't parked in another part of town and all those kinds of things. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, thank you, Chief McClay, for that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. Yeah, thank you. I think that's it. Uh, just real quick for me, the only thing I do want to mention when it comes to that Greystones, uh, I read the emails, and I have to agree, Mr. Yeager brought up maybe putting some type of a, a permanent small signage down there in several places It would say no dumping on those sites uh, because of the fact that that especially is an open space area. Oh, I'm sorry, it was you? Oh, I'm no, sorry. It wasn't, it wasn't you. Uh, it was Mr. No. Parker Mr. and Mr. Bowers. Mr. And uh, and Mr. Ba okay. You said Mr. Yeager. Oh, I'm Mr. sorry. Oh, it was, I'm sorry, yeah, it was Ted. I thought you had mentioned it also. Oh, you're giving me yeah, credit. Mr. Bowers, I'm sorry. I need it. <laughs> but yes, it is, it is something that I think maybe we should look into uh, to do down there. Uh, we have the regular uh, sign up there that shows it's open space, but that doesn't mean everyone's going to respect that, including landscapers who probably didn't know any any better and took some of that stuff over there. But it, it does make a big mess for everyone else that gets down there every year and puts their time in to get that cleaned up. And, and I have to thank the borough workers because I understand I couldn't get down there this weekend, but it was a lot that they had to ha address. So I thank them all and the manager for getting on that and getting that cleaned up. Um, I think that's it for me. Anyone else? I just had a quick question sure. for the borough manager uh, regarding MR Writer. Um, I know that there was an issue last month with the weather and everything about hitting deadlines cause since this, is, this, this was acquired and everything with grant money. Are we okay with hitting deadlines for that? I was actually on the job site this morning. Uh, it's progressing. I don't know if you've noticed, but it looks like the main part of the building is pretty well down. Uh, I've, we're, of course, in touch with the contractor. He seems confident that he's going to... Uh, meet the deadline. Uh, he may not even need the extension, but it's there if, if he does. And uh, the funding for it is already in the works. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, is that everything? Anyone else? I have All a right. couple of things. Oh, sure. I'd actually, um, I received the minutes from the civil service meeting from February 21st, and I would just like to ask um, Councilwoman Chronicle why my questions at that meeting were omitted from the minutes. I don't know that they're verbatim minutes. Um, I'm not the secretary of it, so I, um, they're, like I said, they're not verbatim minutes, so I don't know that. The only reason why I'm asking is because the other two people that did ask questions, their questions are verbatim on these minutes, but yet mine at that same meeting were omitted. 
So I'm just curious. It wasn't purposeful. I mean, we don't list out on those minutes the members of the public that are there. Again, they're not verbatim minutes, so. Were these minutes approved at your last meeting? Yes, they were. So there's no way to get the comments that I made back on these minutes? No. Okay, so it's on video. Okay. And then you were going to look into, um, I believe at that same meeting we discussed, uh, I had a conversation with the chief, the February meeting about um, if he was involved in administering the oral, and he had told me that no, he was choosing three chiefs from different departments, and that you were gonna look into that. So do you have an answer for me? That, I, that was one of the questions that I asked at that meeting. The oral examination was given by three separate uh, police chiefs. It was not given by Chief McClay. Okay, thank you. And then I just have one more thing. Um, the beautification committee will be at the plaza this Saturday and Sunday. We're gonna be cleaning up. We have to get about a yard of dirt to fill in the divot that was created by um, one of the U-Haul trucks that kept parking there. So we have to level the one area off. And then we're gonna be cleaning up, laying that dirt down and checking the, um, the plants to see if any plants need to be replaced at that spot. And then also cleaning up the Philadelphia and Pennsylvania Avenue. So if anyone would like to come out and join us, we're going to begin, I believe, 10 a.m. I, I believe so, that's what it was, 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. All right. Okay. I just have one quick announcement. Sure. On uh, May 19th, the Friends of the Morrisville Dog Park will be hosting a cocktail party at Historic Summer Seat. It is from 6 to 9 p.m. Tickets are $75, and if you would like one, uh, feel free to either contact me or go through their website or the Friends of the Dog Park Facebook site. Okay. I want a ticket. <laughs> I'll see you, Justin, after the meeting. All right, anything else? Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I think I won the office pool. <laughs> what I say. <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes 8 0. We're done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're entertaining to me, Steve. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs>